three in a row and you're going to need health on your side and you see that currently it's a bit of walking wounded. DeMarcus Cousins comes back, plays as well as he does. Andre Iguodala dealing with the calf issues. He delivers the ultimate knockout blow. Kevon Looney wasn't able to go in this one because of the chest contusion. And then Clay Thompson obviously uh, out with that hamstring that Coach Kerr was just talking about. We welcome in the great Doris Burke now. And, and Doris, uh, Look, there's so many things to look at here, and I guess I would just start with the guys that were on the floor and were asked to deliver, were able to. What does that say about the collective uh, of this group? I just thought the whole night was the epitome of championship medal. When you want to understand what it looks like, it looked like tonight from the Golden State Warriors, and it was across the board. The confidence that Quinn Cook showed in knocking down shots after Clay Thompson hits that, you know, the... the thigh injury or the the hamstring injury Kevon Looney going down I mean just I thought it was extraordinary across the board and it was a really to me I know there were some X's and O's but to me it was about toughness and make them feel you and defensively having the pride to say you're not doing to, a, to us what you did the other night championship medal that's what this was all about for me I, I completely agree and I, and I think you know you heard you heard Draymond after that last game talk about what uh, Siakam did and he said look we're not going to have that I mean 52 in game <laughs> one he and Gasol combined for 18 when, when Kerr says make make them feel us you asked him specifically about that Doris what do they mean what does that mean specifically well I think first and foremost you have to come with a level of intention and it starts always with getting back in transition when we asked Steph and Draymond what did not translate on film that you saw in game one and spot on immediately both of them said speed so the first thing they had to do was get back and build their defense and make them play in a half court then it's about intention what are you trying to do from a tactical standpoint what are you sending at Kawhi Leonard how are you recovering to shooters it just felt like a completely different team on the defensive end and I will say this and I heard Jeff Van Gundy talk about this like at some point when do you not have enough it felt fragile tonight Scott I missed a good portion of this basketball game because I was constantly heading back to the locker room for one injury or another uh, I think in light of what they had to fight through just in the course of the game and Steph Curry I'm telling you the truth he tried to sprint off the floor because he was not feeling well and he's a consummate pro and he came back and answered the questions uh, but he wasn't right all night long so this this to me was just in a special special win if they walk away with this championship they're going to remember game two on the road in, in Toronto. Yep because it was really in many respects not a work of art but nobody cares when you're having a parade man can you win four games and you got to win them ugly and they did Doris appreciate the time always. Thanks Scott. All right. Another look at the winning play what ultimately provided a cushion that was too great for the Raptors to overcome after very nearly losing the ball Livingston finds Iguodala and a former finals MVP looked at it thought about it for a split second is like I'll pull this all y'all hold this L take it with you big big shot from Iguodala and that uh, helps Steve Kerr vault up this list as a player and a coach the man's been involved in the finals 10 times. This is almost embarrassing. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Look at that company. He's now up to 76 victories. We welcome in Paul Pierce. And, and, and Paul, Doris was just talking about the fragile nature of the guys on the, on the court and who is able to go and who's not. I want to ask you about a Raptors team that was cooking with gas, man. They take out M Milwaukee four straight. They went on their home floor in this one. They're up double digits in the second. And now it's, it's the series is tied. How fragile is confidence when you're new to this and the champs respond as they did? I think their confidence is fractured. I mean, I think it started there in the second quarter when they had a chance to really expand on the lead. Golden State pulled it within five. Then they came out in the third quarter, went on this 18-0 run, and that really put a dent in their confidence. When you waste a game like this, that Kawhi Leonard goes off of 34 points, 14 rebounds, you lose this game. Now you got to go on the road and go to state where they're as tough as anybody in the NBA. They know that it's an uphill battle from here on out. Paul, help me understand. I mean, look, you played at a star level in this league, but when you've got guys like, say, a cook on your team, and, and you're a role player means you play your role. Be great in your role, right? That's the old saying. Yes. How do you create a culture where a guy knows his role, but then when that role changes, he's able to elevate his game to a different type of role? 
Well, you know, everybody wants more. You know, when you win, you know, Cook was on the championship last year team, and everybody wants more. But he got he has an understanding of this is what they need from me right now for us to win. And then now when guys go down, he says, okay, I'm going to get more of an opportunity. I've been waiting on this opportunity for a long time. And he steps into that expanded role, and he steps up a, a role that he's been wanting <laughs> probably all year long. But, you know, patience is virtue. He stepped right in into that role and knocked down some key shots. I mean, he made a huge impact on tonight's game, and, you know, that's what championship teams are all about. Agreed. Now, Golden State's been able to figure out how to survive without Durant for the stretch that they have, including that end of Game 5 against Houston and then Game 6 on the road. They were able to get through Portland, and so far, here they are with a split. But if, if, if Clay's hamstring's not right, and you got to go without him, and you got to go without KD, at some point, man, 48 minutes is a long time without those guys. <laughs> Can you win a game without, without those guys, even at home? You know what? After tonight, I'm not putting anything past the Golden State Warriors. I, I mean, they have the, the championship DNA. I feel like whoever they put out there, they can get it done. You know, you have the two-time MVP in Curry. You have finals MVP in Iguodala. Cousins is starting to come around. So I, I wouldn't put it past them. If Clay doesn't, doesn't play or KD doesn't play, uh, Golden State is still a great team. And, I, and I'd be remiss if I didn't just get, as a guy who's been through it, you try to play hurt, you try to come back from injuries. Boogie Cousins, I'm, I'm amazed that he's able to give them that. What did you make of his performance tonight, Paul? It was extraordinary, to tell you the truth, because I didn't expect him to give much in this series after coming off two injuries in, in this season. Right. For Who him did? to have an impact, <laughs> for him to have an impact, and this kind of impact in just his second game, I'm amazed. I mean, he outplayed Gasol and Ibaka together. Huge points, huge rebounds, huge defense, his passing. And, you know, my hat's off to him because I doubt that he can even help this Warriors team in this series. And he's been a big contributor tonight. Amazing. Paul, thanks so much for the time. Good to visit, man. All right, thank you. And, I mean, this is the graphic representation of just, just the minutes. Because, look, everyone had their jokes about, you know, how, what kind of shape could the man be in. What You heard Steve Kerr mention it. What, they thought maybe he could give him 20. Well, 28 minutes, and Looney goes out. So, Bogut comes in, and he gives you something. But a double-double and, you know, four, four assists shy of a triple-double. And uh, Boogie perhaps will be joining us as we continue to discuss uh, this season, excuse me, series evening victory. Stephen A. Smith definitely said to join us. We'll get the Raptors thoughts as well as game two goes the way of the road team. We showed you that 18 to nothing run to begin the third quarter. The longest run by any team in the NBA Finals to begin a half since the ABA NBA merger in 1977. To add some context to what you see, the Warriors were 5 for 7 on open shots and contested shots, 6 of 8, uh, and they contested 6 of the 8 Raptors field goals, I should say. Klay Thompson scored or assisted on 13 of the 18 points. Tim Legler's alongside, and uh, Tim, I mentioned that you and I spoke about that third quarter, right? Yeah. And, and, I mean, this might seem like a silly thing to point out, but that building's on fire. And then people go at halftime, you got the lead. People are slow to get back to their seats. Home court advantage is a real thing. And it's not an advantage when Golden State finds their footing and then they land that flurry of punches. I'm not saying that's a big part of it, but is it, it, is it, is it a little part yeah, of it? Yeah, it played into it. And I'm yeah. going to get into in a second the start of the, th the second half. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm good. You know, but first, to me, Scott, the end of the first it half. was started with what happened at the end of the second quarter in yeah. a half that Toronto dominates they allow Curry to get loose at the end of the half. And at this point, he's bottled up. He doesn't look well. They're checking on, on him on the bench. He, he looks like he's physically ill. He doesn't have any energy. He doesn't have any space. And they make some mistakes at the end of the half. He gets a walk-up three because Kawhi's not up on the screener. Uh, then he gets the breakaway layup off the turnover. He gets a short little runner in the middle there. And he finishes with two free throws. So Steph Curry gets nine points in the last 250 of the second quarter. That, to me felt like a huge momentum shift in the game because not only is he now feeling it it's a five point game it should have been 12 to 15 you can't allow Golden State to narrow the gap like that as you're walking off the court knowing that 
coming out, you aren't going to have that emotion in the crowd to start in the second half. That's most NBA arenas, of right? Of course. I, I'm and, not singling right. out Toronto. I'm just saying I'm singling them out because their home court advantage is so good that it's noticeable when yeah, there's a ton of sure. empty seats and people aren't ready to go nuts. Which is why your margin for error needs to be greater. You need to go in there up 12. So if you do have a slow start right, right now, maybe you call a timeout. It's only, it's only an eight-point game instead of five from what it was. And so for me, that's where it all started to turn. And then they came out in the third quarter and they're – Passing in motion really turned the game. In the highlight, we showed Bogut and Cook contributing in ways that, that you couldn't have imagined yeah. they would be asked to or I shouldn't say be able, but they did. Uh, they're certainly capable of it. But I'm looking at Siakam and Gasol. They had 52 in game one. And I, I'm thinking there's no chance. Golden State's like, go ahead and do that again. They had 18 in yeah. this game. So, I mean, that, that jumps off the page. But as you're watching and as you're putting stuff together to show us to illustrate where the game's won and lost, what stands out? So they come out to start the third quarter. Golden State's feeling a little better about themselves at halftime. And, and now the motion and the passing turns the game. They get 14 straight buckets on assists to start the third quarter. This is a set play. Here's what they're trying to get. You're going to get a back screen here. They're going to get Iggy out of there, right? So now you get the back cut. And then the last part of this is going to be Cousins cleaning up for Curry, bringing him to the ball. It's a set they run all the time. But it begins with this back screen action. And when you're guarding a guy like Steph Curry, man, are you afraid to leave his side. And so you end up getting this action right here on this screen. Now, this is one of those situations to me, this should be an obvious switch. I mean, Danny Green should just switch off here, pick up Draymond, and then when Curry pops out, that's okay. We got Kawhi jumping. They don't do it because Danny Green is so concerned about Steph Curry getting a three that you get an easy pitch and catch layup right here. Clay Thompson, Draymond Green. Great design, great execution. The motion and, and the passing starting to take over the game. Here's the very next trip. Curry with the rebound, throws it ahead. And right here, take a look. He's looking up the floor. He sees this, and you can see him pointing. He's saying, get the ball into the post. It's exactly what they do. How good was DeMarcus Cousins tonight, by the Remarkable. way? Remarkable. I thought when he went down with that injury, we'd never see him again this postseason. Good for him. So good tonight. You can't say enough at the minutes, the production you gave him. And again, here goes that weak side action with Steph Curry. You're so afraid of him popping free off the cut. Kawhi Leonard falls asleep a little bit. You get this little brush screen, and here goes Clay Thompson. And again, it's an easy little drop-off layup to Clay. So first half, Golden State, I think they started the game shooting 28% to a right. quarter plus. Now they start getting the motion, the movement. They're getting layups. They're getting open threes. Completely different offensive flow in that third quarter. But it all started with that last three minutes of the first half. Totally agree. If it was a fight, they'd, 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 there'd have been a standing eight in that second when they're down double digits. But this is a heavyweight champ. You let them catch their breath and get their legs beneath them, and then good luck. But then Toronto punches back, and it, we end up in a wild sequence there at the end where it looked like Go Golden State's trying to turn it over. Iguodala gets that look. He takes that long, pregnant pause, stares it down, and makes it. What do you make of this yeah, sequence? Yeah, and it looks to me like the coaches right there are screaming to foul Draymond Green once Curry gives it up the first time because they're definitely close enough to do it. Instead, he hits Livingston. It ends up back over to Curry, and then eventually Iguodala, who takes that three. A lot of nerve there because you got three four seconds left on the shot clock but I do think that's the right play because if you don't take that shot you might end up not getting a clean look or turning it over in a two-point game that's a guy that's been a finals MVP he's not afraid of the lights steps up makes a huge shot but look I also want to talk about a clay going down uh -huh. and this guy that you're about to talk to you can't say enough about what Quinn Cook did coming in and giving them nine points at a critical time in the game with Clay Thompson limping off the floor we talked about cousins great Draymond Green was sensational uh, this they got basically contributions up and down that roster, and this is why they're the, they're the world champs, man. Margin for error is so small against this team. They make you pay like nobody else. Tim Legler, Scott Van Pelt, Sports Center, 11 o'clock in the East, and you made my segue perfectly. I will just turn and welcome in Quinn Cook.